when it came to this Atlanta scene and watching it grow over these years, man, what do you think it was that allowed the city to pop like it pop? Freedom. You know, out here it's like you could do what you want to do. It you got the money and doing it right, and ain't nobody stopping you. But everyone helps you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like on the west, don't nobody help you. Say fuck you. You know, ride that. You know, out here, hey, what's up? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And like that, down south, hospitality. You yeah. know what I'm saying? With just freedom and you know what I'm saying, and avenues, and you know what I'm saying, and new money. Is that what made you leave Cali and come over here? What was it that made you say, you know what, let me go ahead and slide down here to the side? Like me, you know, before the Rico act and all that, you know, I sold dope and all that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I was a dope dealer that always sold dope out of town. Mm -hmm. So I explore out of town. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no boundary where the money can take you. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? So when I came down here, Too Short was down here. I think me, Too Short, was like the only West Coast it's crazy. artist that was down here moving in these streets, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And E-40 came. Mm. And then, you know, I seen how Short was living over there. He bought two two lots and made a house. <laughs> and he said he spent 400000 you know? And then, he, then I did that song, I Love, with me, Scarface, Too Short, yeah. and Trick Daddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when I got paid for that, that opened my whole mind up to be like, I gotta get out of California. <laughs> <laughs> and go out here and produce for people. How much money is it in the production side of things? For those that want to get into the game, man, what do they need to be looking forward to? If they able to get a smash hit. Yeah, make sure you get your 50%. Okay. 50% for the music and 50% for the lyrics. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But the 50% can go a long way because it's probably five writers on the lyric side and yeah. five guests, so they got to split that up. Producer get the whole chunk. So God. that's what it was fun being a producer. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So Nah, I'm with you on that. So now when you maneuvering in the A, man, and you going back and forth to strokers and stuff, was it the strip clubs that made you stay or was it the freedom that made you stay? The freedom, the strip clubs, <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? The city of Atlanta, just everything was for me was six hours away. You yeah. Atlanta and Georgia is surrounded by six states. Yeah. Two hours away from here, you in another state, baby. Thanks. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? So I would go here from Mississippi. From my mom had to New Orleans, mm -hmm. to Atlanta, Texas, you know what I'm saying? My dad lived in Florida and Miami, so I lived in Miami for like 30 years, you know yes what I'm saying? With pops off Miami Garden Drive. Shout out to everybody in Miami. Yes, sir. And you know, just, I always moved around as a kid. Speaking of your mama, man, I know y'all had a real close relationship as Most well, definitely. man. What was it like being able to take care of her in her latter years? I mean, you know, my mother was a blues singer. Yeah. If you look her music up, her name was Lynn Venardo. She wrote songs for Bobby Blue Bland. She wrote songs right. for James Cleveland. She wrote songs for a lot of people. And she sung with a lot of people like Maddie Moss Clark and stuff like that. But just to take care of her when she got sick, I already did my work in hip hop. So I just stopped time. Yeah. and really concentrated on her and my business because I was at home. So that's when I said, okay, let me take care of my mom for the you know, nine years before exactly. she passed, and you know what I'm saying, and just me and her bond, and you know what I'm saying, and I, I love a black woman, exactly. you know what I'm saying, and nah, I was a only kid, you know what I'm saying, so I wouldn't want my kids to put me in no motherfucking home. Hell no, nah, we ain't doing that. Yeah, because like everybody was like, put it in the home, I was like, I'm gonna go buy me a home, exactly. and fix it up like one of them homes, Come on, and let her kick it, because you know, now. had the dogs around, because they make sure she don't go out nowhere and exactly. all that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I really haven't even been out the house since my mama died, and that's been since 2001. For real. I don't be like, when you coming back? I mean, I'm like, I don't know, something just keeping me in the house. Yeah. You know, working and doing yeah. what I do and, you know, have a mind of your own. You know, I love getting up cutting the grass and yeah. shit out here, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, surviving during this 2020 pandemic and pandemic. everything, it felt like a movie. Talk to me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like when they first said everything closed, like shh, you going in the grocery store and they fighting over the tissue and <laughs> shit like that. Like, damn. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And all that, man, it was just an experience that we never went through that we went through. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Maybe they went through that shit back in the 30s and the 40s and the 60s. Yeah, the Great you know Depression. The song. All that. Yeah. And, and that word recession, scaring motherfuckers, but you got to learn how to Get address rigid. that. You know what yep. I'm saying? And save your money and start spending your money on big ass chains and shit. Facts, facts. 
I mean, another legend that I was on YouTube, I was going doing my research on Daz. I saw you in the studio with Pimp C, man. That's my guy. Can you speak on your relationship with the Pimp and y'all being able to vibe together? Oh, man, Chad, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we always had a great relationship and hung out, you know what I'm saying? And it's one of my real good friends, you know what I'm saying? And we never did no music, mm. but we always hung out. Yeah. That's a lot of my friends do, you know, because I never, like, try to put the music on them like that. We just hang out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Me and 2 chains hang out. He called me to the club the other night. Yeah. We partied in there. He's like, yeah, man, teach me how to play dominoes. <laughs> we playing dominoes in the middle of the motherfucking club. That's crazy. Shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. telling him, yeah, five is, you can know, five, 10, 15, 20. You can, and you can make money. Like, you can make money off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on that, man. So, you know. I always build my relationship without the music, and then the music comes. I mean, speak on change, though, too, because over these 25 years, you done saw that man's trajectory go from titty boy to two chains. Most so, definitely. I mean, I was what there. was it like? I used to hang with them boys on South Side, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And all that, him and Dollar, you know what I'm saying? They yes, stayed sir. around the corner from me. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was there when he made the transition from that first mixtape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When he drove the Beamer. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Now they didn't turn the Aaron's paint thing into the Fulton Police Department. Come on now. Well, you know, I, you know, I go back when you say that right yes, there. Sir. So, you know, it's just a good thing to be having a good relationship with everybody in Atlanta. You know, I don't got no feuds with nobody worldwide. Yeah. And I just try to keep it 100 because I stayed in myself. 